Because I feel so comfortable talking to all y'all, I find it safe to mention this. Um, right before I started uh, filming this special, this little commentary I'm doing right here, um, I let out this big fart, and it sounded exactly like the Oklahoma Sooners drumline. It went... Uh, so anyway, you can digest that. I can't believe I just said that story, but... Like I said, only 14 of you watch these commentaries, so I feel safe. So here we go on with another commentary. Um, I actually wanted to be out filming today, but unfortunately my dog is very, very sick and she needs somebody to, to stay with her, so I'm cooped up for now. Um, so I thought I would continue Bit Character Month, the original, by talking about the Hinako Nino Mia and Copycat Ken profiles, two profiles that I'm very proud of and still hold up to this day, except rewatching this one, I think this one belongs on the proper modulation commentary because it is really like loud and blaring. Um, very hard to talk over. I had to turn the volume way down for this one. Um, but yeah, this is a character who most fans would not call a bit character, but she definitely was a bit character in the anime. And like I said, I'm a student of the anime, strictly. I have read a bunch of the manga volumes starring Hinako Nino Mia, and she's kind of the same, but in a lot of ways different. Um, she stays as the, the big, like the older version of herself uh, way more often, so she's got a lot more sex appeal in the, uh, in the manga. And while I'm not saying that I wish that I would get less... Uh, voluptuous Hinako Ninomiya in the anime, I think they, they made a really good decision by keeping her, like, jubilant and bouncy because the OAV-style animation really lent itself well to that. So this profile was a favorite of a lot of people back in the day. I mean, right now, looking back on it, it's kind of hard to watch because of the poor quality and the poor sound. Um, but back then, all my profiles looked like this, so a lot of people really flocked to this one in particular because just the, the different style that it was presented in, and there was a lot of, like, little unique quirks about this profile. Um, for one, the opening, and actually the closing as well, um, where it was done in the style of a children's storybook, and that was really no big deal, although back then, um... My profiles were all very much standard. This one uh, threw a little bit of a, a new spiel on them and um, kind of made it stand out that way. Um, very, very easy effect to do. My, my editing software has a thing where you can freeze frame animation and just use them as regular still pictures. And I put a little um, cartoon effect on them to make them look like they were a little bit more pastel-y and and I just put some text on top of that and did a simple flip the pages effect, which I can't do anymore with my new software. I'm really pissed off about that. Such simple things I can't do anymore. Uh, you could see my, uh, my dander is up. And other than the Iguma Torajiro profile, this marked the first time where I did a profile in another voice besides my own. I did that kind of starting off on the wrong week, that kind of voice. And, um... I think it worked out really well. Um, I think after Bit Character Month transpired and I got all these profiles out of the way, I, I came out of it feeling a little bit more brave, a little bit more daring about the things that I could pull off in these profiles. And soon doing voices and you know strange character voiceovers became not such a big deal for me. It became pretty commonplace. Um, now you can expect me to do voices like Tobias and um, the evil doll spirit voice. Um, just different voices besides my own uh, popping up in all these profiles. And Miss Hinako was one of the first characters to garner herself her own theme music. For her theme music, I repeatedly use an old Commodore 64 tune by the name of Ocean Loader 2. And I never use the original Sid version, but I use a lot of remixes that I found on Overclocked. Uh, that's overclockedremix.com, I believe, or is it .org? I don't remember, but that's where I, I used to get a lot of music for these profiles. They're, they're really cool. They're, you know, if you have a video game tune in your head, that chances are they have, there's, a, there's a, a remix of it, like a professional sounding remix on that site that's free to download and you don't get bugged by, by YouTube about using this stuff. It's all safe. So I definitely suggest going there. 
Actually, let me rewind myself. Um, the the Ocean Loader song isn't on Overclocked. That's on a separate um, website, which has a bunch of Commodore 64 remixes. Um, I don't remember what that website is, so I apologize. But if you Google search Commodore 64 remix, um, it's one of the first things that comes up. And you just right click and download to your heart's content. But yeah, there was just something about the Ocean Loader sound that I don't know, just spoke to me about Hinako Nino Mia. I don't know what it was, I don't know why the heck I made that choice, but um, I used like three or four different remixes of the Ocean Loader song and they keep popping up and they always work. I think it really gives the character her own little flair. Um, I think it fits well with the Hapo 5 Yen Satsu. Um, just a very computery, techy looking move, just the way it sucks all the uh, the the light out of the room and turns everything green. I think the techno beat of this song really fits with that kind of look. Actually, just mentioning that brings something to mind. In my top 10 underutilized characters, when Hinako Nino Mia shows up, I put a green filter on the screen, made everything like look green and she's holding the, the, the yen in front of her face, the light is starting to billow from it, and in the background of the, the song, it goes, Keep rocking the Sid chip, which is a reference to the Commodore 64's sound engine. It's called the Sid engine. So, um, my kudos go out to anybody who was able to get that obscure reference, but I doubt anybody did because it really is, you know, a Riddler like reference. Um, but sometimes I throw these things in just to entertain myself. Ah, uh, here comes the, the copycat Ken profile. I gotta stop what I'm doing and talk about this because this deserves all my attention. This beginning right here. I remember back then I considered this profile a lot of work. Um, this is nothing compared to the stuff I do right now, but a lot of little pieces went into this profile. Um, particularly this opening right here. An opening which I kept, like I say, a lot in the back of my mind. There's a lot of shit piling up in the back of my mind. Um, and I just said to myself, you know, wouldn't it be cool if, but I didn't even consider that I would be able to do this because I've seen professional videos on YouTube. I see people with, you know, way better equipment and way better knowledge of editing than me. And I just kind of dismissed the idea. I just said that I don't have the know-how to sync up dialogue with mouths and stuff like that. But... Here we're going to rewind a bit and we're going to watch the uh, the original trailer right now. Get that There's sound up. Magic trick I've ever seen. Oh, so loud and overmodulated. I need to know how he does it. He has no trick. It's real. Cue cheesy effect. Every great magic trick consists of three acts. The first act is called the pledge. The magician shows you something ordinary. But of course, it probably isn't. The second act is called The Turn. He's obsessed with discovering your method. The magician makes this ordinary something do something extraordinary. Huh. Now you're looking for the secret, but you won't find it. <laughs> That's why there's a third act called The Prestige. This is the part with the twists and turns, where lives hang in the balance. Julie, come on. And you see something shocking you've never seen before. And here we are back to the profile. Hey, my Mega Man shirt. I remember that. I wish I had that shirt back. Um, but yeah, this was me back in my old apartment. A very simple effect. Me changing in back of this towel. Um, another little piece that went into this that, you know, it's easy to forget about. Um, just wanted to put my own spin on the copycat kerchief thing. But yeah, that was the, um, what we just watched there was the trailer that I went into this profile just saying, there's no way I'm going to pull this off, but I think I'm just going to try it out anyway and see if I can do it. And it just turns out that I came up with something that I was so proud of that, that for a while I would have put this profile on my top 10 list just for that opening. That opening was, was pretty cool. So I bring this message to all young movie makers out there, even though I don't consider myself an expert by any means, but I do consider myself somebody who learns as he goes pretty well. My message is, you just don't know until you try. Um, a lot of times you can concoct some pretty crazy things in your mind, and you just say to yourself, there's no way that I could put this together with the software I have. 
but with today's software, you'd be surprised how, you know, how much you can accomplish. Um, there have been so many times, I can think of a, a bunch just right off the bat where I just went into a profile with like this crazy vision say, saying to myself, there's no way I'm going to be able to pull this off. And I ended up doing it. Um, the Setsuki Miyako Oji profile was, is a good example. I knew how to use a green screen and I knew, I've, you know, I've put two of myself on the same screen before, but... I never did like such a complicated thing. Three guys talking to themselves and another one comes in front. Um, I had an idea for a talk show set and I didn't even have one. So I had to put one together myself. It took a lot of time, but eventually I got there. And um, the Crepe King Joe profile is another good example. I didn't go into that profile with any UFC's like licensed editing software or anything like that. I just had to recreate it with the uh, you know the software that I had, and it just involved a lot of studying you know the way the UFC does things and just replicating what they do. And as for the interviews, which involved all the uh, the freeze framing and and just animating things by hand, I just said to myself, well, you know, I don't have professional animator you know equipment, but I can do it this way. And if you can figure out a way to do it and you have that will and desire and most of all the time to do it, um, then you can make anything happen. Um, you should see some of the stuff that I'm doing for the Rama Tome profile. It's absolutely out there. Um, but I, you know, I hope that it can accurately match my vision, which is pretty big. There's only been one time where I've actually, I've had to quit doing something because it just wasn't working. If you remember the Sewn Tendo profile and the manner in which I presented that, I did it in an E! True Hollywood Story fashion. And normally on an E! True Hollywood Story, they have interviews with friends and family, acquaintances, enemies sometimes. And um, I wanted to do a virtual interview with Genma Saotome talking about Sewn Tendo. And I was going through the anime episode by episode, and anytime Genma said something halfway interesting that had a lot of like key words that I could use, I would write it down and say it was in th you know this episode. And then in the end, I would just take all those words, combine them into my own sentences, and make Genma s sound like he was saying things that he really wasn't. I learned this tactic from uh, Sal and Richard from the Howard Stern show. Um, they're these like prank calling guys that are really really dirty. And they would go into celebrities' audiobooks and just find certain words and cut and paste and make them sound like they're saying like really filthy, dirty things that they're really not. Um, I was trying to do that with Genma, but it just wasn't working out. Um, it was proven to be way too time consuming, and I almost got one sentence completed, but I needed one more word, and Genma just wasn't saying it. And I tried to break up words to make it sound like if I found if I found the first syllable of this word, I would try to cut that off with another. But it it just didn't work, and it just when I played it back, it sounded very sloppy. I would have had to put subtitles on it, and then people would be like, "Why the heck is Genma talking like that?" But um, so yeah, that was an aborted idea. I think that was the only one. Um, so yeah, if there was a moral that I learned from the copycat Ken profile, it's to always try, if you have a vision in your head, just go in and wing it, you know? I mean, there's, there's nothing stopping you and, um, you know, what's the worst that can happen? If you find out it's not working, then quit halfway into it. Um, but you'd be surprised what you can pull off and sometimes your end product can even exceed your vision of, you know, how great it could be. And I think, you know, the Hinako Nino Mia profile was cool and all, but the Copycat Ken profile right here was very instrumental in the evolution of DJ Clive and Ranma One Half Character Profiles. I went into Ranma One Half Character Profiles a little bit timid, um, not really sure about what I could do. Um, but at the end of the Copycat Ken profile, I said, nothing's off the table. I grew a set of balls and I just went out there and just. I was able to more differentiate profiles, put the uh, the DJ Clive spin on them. So it's not just, you know, straight laced character profiles. It's me having fun and just cutting loose. You know, we are not being paid to do this. This is not a job. We don't have bosses. We are our own boss. So we march to the beat of our own drum and we can do whatever the hell we damn please. And so if we can, why not do it?
If I want to animate Ranma and Ryoga having violent butt sex on a giant omelet, then I can very well do it. Of course, you know, YouTube probably wouldn't show it. You probably have to come over here to Daily Motion. But needless to say, if you have a vision in your head and you feel adamant that you want it out there and people would be interested in it, then go for it. I, I say, you know, you have my endorsement because I wouldn't know where character profiles would be today if I didn't, you know, gain that bravery. So this is your good buddy DJ Clive, the Rama 1F character profile guy, bidding you adieu from Daily Motion once again. Um, I'm sorry if I went off on a few tangents on this one. I got on a little bit of a soapbox, so I apologize for that as well. Um, but I think that, you know, even though these were just two parts of a four-part puzzle, these were very important profiles in the evolution of DJ Clive. And I just thought that I would, you know, just make sure that they were given their due as far as, you know, where I am at right now. Because um, I definitely wouldn't be doing the stuff that I'm doing. I wouldn't be going in the woods every weekend where it's nice and filming if if it weren't for the copycat Ken profile and just th the way I was able to differentiate profiles after doing that. So that's about it. Um, hopefully next week I will come up with another commentary idea because I don't have one right now. To everybody watching, I would also appreciate if you keep your fingers crossed for my dog and her health because she's getting a little old and she's getting a little sick. Um, she's got a little bit of a stomach thing going on now, so... This morning she vomited up yellow bile and oh my god, I've just overstayed my welcome officially. So this is me bidding you adieu again and life is Ranma.